I'm telling you, I wasn't even a little bit worried yesterday when we talked about this on the air. Wasn't even worried. That's just like us. Oh, Sandra Cox, good. We're good. And once again, that's true. This has been a good week. Good week of uh, both being right and wrong about a lot of things and also finding out what you don't know, which as I get older, I realize is everything. I don't know anything. I don't, uh, things I thought I knew, I don't know. And I've got a whole lesson uh, this week and things that I don't know how to do that every man should know how to do. Uh, I, I fixed something that I was very proud of, and then I turned around and something else broke, and I didn't know how to fix that. And then it occurred to me, you know, you don't know how to fix anything. You can't fix anything. And then I was doing this other thing with, is, is business related? And, uh, and, and I, uh, you know, you, you know, I've been in business for a long time. And uh, then I started to do this paperwork that I needed to do, basically LLCs type stuff. And all of a sudden I was like, oh man, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even, I don't even really know what a W-9 is. What am I talking about? Who are we kidding around here? Just faking it. <laughs> so it's been that kind of, it's been a humbling week. I'll begin today's show selfishly wishing my Youngest son, a very, very happy birthday. Happy birthday to Clark, who turns 13 today. Clark, I know you're not listening. Maybe you will later. But uh, happy birthday, son. I love you with all my heart. He is, uh, he's now 13, which means I, guys, I, 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 got, a, uh, I got a house of, uh, of teenagers. That's what uh, this guy has right here. Two teenager, teenagers simultaneously. Hmm. That's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I'll say this, it's, it's less, I, I figured this out, and you parents out there of a certain age will, will be able to, you know, recognize this, maybe even empathize with this. It's not so much the age as the grade. And I am for certain that seventh grade is the worst of all the grades. If your kid's in seventh grade, it's not a good time. It's just, it's not a good time. <laughs> it's not good. Seventh grade. All kids in seventh, if you're in seventh grade listening to me right now, you're an idiot. I just want you to know that. If, you, <laughs> if you're in seventh grade, you're an idiot. All of them, all seventh graders. Nonsense. They're, they're old enough to have very distinct personalities and think they know things. But they don't know anything, and they're sure of it. They're sure of all these things they think they know that, 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 that they don't. And it's unreal. And it's very, very difficult to remain patient. I find it trying, very trying to just nod my head when he's saying something asinine. And I'm just going, hmm, okay, well, great. Good use of your time. That's a great use of your time, son. Or when you just kind of have in your head, you know, you're thinking it's like, okay, look, he's in seventh grade. Let him get, let him get through it. It'll be all right. I try to do that. But at least once a week, your patience is tried in a way that is extremely pressing. It's, 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 it's a true test of this newfound patience that you uh, glorify, exemplify, or talk about, right? That's me. All the time. And I know. My mom told me I was nonsense in seventh grade. So I, and, and she kept saying, wait till your kids are in seventh grade. Your parents end up being right about a lot of stuff. They end up being a, a right about a lot of stuff. And I know that's inevitable that you find this out, but it is, it is truly trying and frustrating. And anyhow, happy birthday, Clark. <laughs> He's a great kid. He just happened to have been in seventh grade. So next year, we're good. Eighth grade, I had no problems in eighth grade. Kids seem to come around the corner doing things a little bit differently when you get to eighth grade. Happy birthday, you idiot. <laughs> there it is. Whew. Man, I, it is hard to imagine, though. That, I think what's even more hard to imagine, and I'll move on from this. What's more hard to imagine is that uh, one will be driving very shortly. Uh, already has his learner's permit and will be out on the road. Uh, so look out, Tallahassee. And then secondly, uh, you know, now this one's that much closer. That, 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 that worries me more. 
this idea of my kids driving around. I like it. I'm tired of being a taxi. It's going to be great. Oh, you want to go to the store? Get your ass in the car and go. I don't have to take you clear across town for nothing. Yeah, next year for football practice, no problem take for you. You're asked to football practice, That's, right. That's what you do. It's not five o'clock golf. It's three o'clock golf. It's whenever the hell I want. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. That's that's where we're at. Hey, you know, we got good news today, guys. I'll share this with you without getting into too many of the details. I don't want to blow it. I don't want to ruin anything. But it has to do with Florida State football. And Tom and I and the whole War Chant crew, we're really gonna, about to do some good things uh, for this first game of the season against LSU. And I am pumped about this. Um, a lot of people obviously are. That game uh, is of vital importance. But the stuff that we do around it, Tom, you know, I, I said this to Gene this morning, to Doc Combs, to Gene Williams this morning. I said, you know, he was talking about some of the opportunities we have in Orlando. And some of it involves you and me doing pregame show and all that kind of stuff that we always do anyhow. And I don't know anything about this oh, yet because yeah, he sent stuff. a text that said, hey, I got some details for you. But I knew that you were about to call him. Yeah. You might have alluded to some of the paperwork. Paperwork. <laughs> Lots of paperwork. So I've done I've, a ton of paperwork this I figured week. I'd spare him while you guys were talking paperwork. Yeah, so, you know, I uh, I had a conversation with him, and it was mostly good news after I got past all the paperwork. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, hey, look, by the way, we have some great opportunities to do what we do, which is, in my case, broadcast, do the, do the radio show. In the case of War Chant, in general, bring the best FSU coverage uh, that we can bring you. And and I think because that's such an important game, I really was interested to see what, what it was we were going to be doing and how it was going to be done. I've been very fortunate to have a job that uh, doesn't feel an awful lot like work for 25 years, and it's remarkable. I mean, it's, I've, this has been my career, obviously. And so there aren't too many things that we do that, uh, I don't know, uh, move me in any way. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, we've been able to broadcast from the Rose Bowl. We've, you know, you and I went down and covered the Stanley Cup finals together. We, We've done some pretty heavy things, obviously, and really cool things in this in this field. Chicago was a really good, oh, you know, buddy, outside. broadcasting from downtown Chicago. That was cool in those studios. No, that was fun. It was snowing as we went in, it was yeah. really cool. Yeah. No, we've done a lot of cool things, and uh, yeah, I, I did a show back way back when I was at the old station, live from Denver, uh, right there in their big studios where they host all their shows, and that was fun. And you know, I've had those chances, Colorado, others, but. Um, Really what it is for me when we go on site, whenever we're on location for a game, doesn't matter if it's a bowl game or whatever it is, in this case, a big road game. All I really want is for us to be immersed in uh, an area of the city around the stadium, wherever, maybe in the stadium, maybe just outside, whatever it is, where you feel the energy, where it really allows you to kind of soak it all in. Because I think we do our best broadcasts and best shows when we're of it, when you're in it, when you're part of it. Because deep down, we are just gigantic fans. And so I want to feel that same energy that you get going into a stadium before a big game, like we had against LSU last year in New Orleans. Yeah, I think another example of a show on site, this is years and years ago, is mostly you and Matt let me come on for a segment, but it was before the South Carolina Bowl game in that Atlanta bar. Remember that, you know, it was a two- or three-story bar guys were on the second deck i think it was called stats if i recall correctly but that was for the peach bowl mm -hmm. and you could feel it because it was an old bar it yeah. was just it was a cool no bar there yeah. might be a south carolina fan or two but that was dedicated i think it was owned by an old at the time yeah but at any rate going there doing a segment and feeling it it was different than doing say we did a pregame show from the stadium in charlotte before anybody was allowed in the stadium in 2010 it's just when you're around the people. That was a weird experience because the, of uh, Matt Millen. The Matt Millen experience. Mm. Yeah. It was also Krispy Kreme Donuts Day. So that was that, a great day. Yeah. It's also the day that uh, I peed next to Sean McDonough. <laughs> and he is three feet tall. <laughs> he and Matt Millen were. It is the most bizarre <laughs> thing in the world. It's like Arnold, Danny DeVito, and twins. It truly is. I went in to pee in the stadium during a commercial break. Sean McDonough. Was at the stall next to me, and I thought he is not even as tall as the stall. He's not even as and this is crazy. People could just pee on him. <laughs> it was I nuts. don't know why that's become a theme of late. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, anyhow. 
uh, that was a fun year. Yeah, no, when you're engaged, when you're surrounded by, um, you know, fans, Florida State fans in particular, and just and it's a big moment, it gives you the juice, man, to be locked in and have a lot of fun with these broadcasts. Um, and I love it. I love it. Uh, Christopher, thanks for the contribution. He San writes, Diego, Chris. Yeah. He writes, we're concerned about two losses, correct? Don't you think a muffled punt? And a missed field goal could create both those losses. If you fumble a punt on the one, you'll lose tight games. Just ask LSU. Yeah, Christopher, and it's good to see you again. Whoa. And thanks so much. Appreciate you. I look forward to his visit every year. When he comes to town, always very giving with Christopher. Uh, but uh, that's not why I look forward to it. It's just nice to talk with him, and he's on the other coast. There is a Actually, there's a little aside here that I'll do while you're taking a sip. Which is, uh, hey, Christopher, please send the address to your domicile in California. He is owed, because of Padres and Mets, some Tallahassee beer mm. that I'll put together. But There's I wanted to do ones. that for the opening or the eve of college football. I just yeah, want that to yeah. be like a happy season starter kind of a thing. But since we lost, his team won. Send that address. Thank you, buddy. Uh, so, yeah, listen, you could lose two games easily um, and, and, and without, you know, uh, a muffed punt or a missed field goal or whatever it might be. I mean, you could just get thoroughly outplayed by a really talented team like LSU, and we'll see what Clemson is. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a situation where, um, you know, anytime you play Clemson on the road, and they do have talent, uh, they're certainly not devoid of that. They've recruited well over the years. Uh, that's You could easily lose that game. Lord knows we've done a lot of that against that particular program uh, over the last 10 years. That's That's enough. I've, I've finally reached my point of, uh, okay, now. Well, I mean, this is ridiculous. They're within striking distance of a platinum Bohica, buddy. It cannot stand, man, this aggression. It cannot. Across this line. I mean, good God. When you say it like that, when you put it out there like that, it's hurtful. As somebody who has done this job for a very long time, I understand we play the results a lot when we have criticisms of coaches and players and all of those things. And so typically I'm fairly level-headed and patient. Maybe I wasn't in my younger years on the air. I certainly am now. But at some point, at some point, it crosses into the irrational anger stage. I don't know what number of consecutive losses it is for you. It's different for everybody. Your ability to put up with things you don't like grows as you get older and you learn to balance all the good and the bad in your life. So you're like, oh, this sucks, but I got a lot of good things so I can handle this part that sucks. You can't do that early. When you're 20 years old and you lose on a Saturday, it consumes you. It's that way until you play again. It's six straight days of hell. Like you're mad about it on Thursday of that week. Really mad, like legitimately angry. It just takes anything to touch to touch off that anger, right? Then it's not that way. When you you know you're married, you got kids, you've got a life, you've lived, you've seen great conquests, you've seen terrible losses, and everything in between, you're a little bit better. But I think somewhere around four, after four, if you lose four straight times to any one opponent, obviously a rival, it goes even further. But four straight, that's you. That fifth loss. That hits a little different. That fifth straight loss is sort of, God, dog. Yeah, I, I think I'm a three four. Three has my full attention because you can get it could be a fluky situation, bad weather, lots of turnovers that put two together. Three is that's outside the boundaries of outliers. That's there. It's something beyond luck if you lose three in a row. They most assuredly are better than you. That is me looking around the rental car agency in line waiting for the car. To, <laughs> yes. I'm looking for a kiosk because I have an appointment yeah, and I gotta it's go. right there. Yeah. Just hand me the gosh darn key. Yeah. And then four is meltdown mode. That's when you get short with the person. That's when you get a little short <laughs> looking to rent a car today. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah now you're yeah. pissed. Yeah. Now you're straight up yeah. like, man, I've been sitting here an hour. This is the confirmation number. You know, I'm here. I got pinged when I walked in just, Let's skip this process. I had to give blood this week, Tom. To who? To, uh, not to anybody. I just, yeah, I had to, I had to, I had to give the blood there. So you go by the, uh, you go by the center and you get, and you give the blood there. So I did it. 
uh, for an upcoming doctor's appointment. Mm. Get the annual physical every birthday. So, you know, I, I make sure yeah. make sure I get this, get, get the blood. I'm peeking around the corner at a colonoscopy. Mm, you are. Well, worse than a colonoscopy. Annual exams. <laughs> oh, great. Didn't even think about that. <laughs> 36, a lot of processed foods. Yeah. Probably need to get on that. At about 40, buddy, it becomes every physical. There's the, okay. And you and the doctor are Kermit. Yeah, it's just you and him. Just that nod towards the end of the examination. They're like, well. I've got my assistant here today. No, you don't. No. Out of the room. Yeah. No, it's it's between me and Doc. There it is right there. Christian Bale and Kermit. We're both just looking at each other. That's me and the doctor. Like. Checked my knees, checked my shoulders. We've had a conversation about uh, exercise and listen, Doc. You know all my markers. Future years, I just want to know what makes this less awkward. Should I just walk in with my pants down? Yeah, does that make it easier for you? I made him laugh the last time. I was just like, "Well, I know what time it is," and I stood up. <laughs> he was like, "Okay." So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's going to happen. Anyhow, so I gave blood this week. This is why I bring it up. Another patient's testing moment. When you go to LabCorp, it could be a test. Test of patients with people, a process, mm. your name getting called in a timely fashion, hopefully. And bravo to this particular woman in this LabCorp that I went to. They were great. I walked in. There were 15 people. I thought, this is going to be half my day. I'm going to be in here half my day. And I I, I hate it. And then it ended up um, it ended up being great. It ended up being a thing where uh, within 20 minutes, I was in, out, blood given. And by the way, I've gotten good at giving blood, too. It doesn't bother me in the least. In, in the least. Yeah. I still got a hang up about that, but I had enough shots, you know, needles in my life mm. that that's not a big deal. But the blood draw, for some reason, it's the turning over of the forearm and that process. That's just, it's, um, it calls attention to itself. You feel the vacuum effect in your own head. You're like, you got to be steely here. And then it's never bad. It's never but it's just bad. that process. You're never just, bad. Ah. Hey, what? I had a spinal tap done years ago. What? Yeah. If you have a spinal tap done, buddy, uh, you can really handle any kind of blood giving or shot taking, any of that. Once you've had that, you know, and this was a long time ago, and uh, and and it was even more kind of a crude process back in the day. They might as well have just walked in with like a spear. <laughs> and <laughs> it was it was brutal. You're like, oh man, they even told you. They're like, well, this is gonna suck. I mean, I remember the first time I broke my arm. I got to give this doctor credit. Uh, I, I broke it the first time. I broke it in two places, and I was uh, 12, 13, something like that. And we go in. How'd you do it? Uh, playing pickup football. We were I, I this, oh. this kid and I were. Uh, he was a really good player, and I did not. It was I was the best player on our team. He was the best player on the other team, and we would have wars at Lake Vista, in St. Petersburg, Florida, right off of 54th or whatever ninth. And uh, I, I love that place. We used to play every Sunday, I think it was, or Saturday, and we'd have. Big games, big games. They were awesome games. And he got behind me on a deep ball, and I was like, no chance. I, I did not want him to score because we were going tit for tat, back and forth, back and forth. And I jumped probably as high as I've ever jumped and just got the tip of my finger on it to disrupt it. So I made the play, Tom. But I got kind of sideways in my effort, and I came down, and my dumbass tried to brace myself with my arm. I learned never to do that. Very valuable lesson. Fall on your shoulder. Don't put your, don't put your arm down like that. There's no reason. And uh, pop it up. I heard it. I knew. Got up. I could touch this part of my arm to this part of my arm. Oh, that, that ain't man. good. That ain't good. So uh, as soon as it happened. I think the director just puked. Uh, as soon as it happened, I got up, and the guy that I was covering that I was trying to keep from uh, catching the football looked at me. And he goes, oh, man. And I was like, yeah. He goes, oh, this is not good. I was like, oh, no, 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 it's not good. And I knew it was broken. It was before the pain had set in. Yep. I just looked at my arm. I'm There's like, oh, that moment. Yo, yeah, here's a moment. And we went over to the center where the lady was, and we're banging on the door. And she's like, we're closed. You can't come in. I'm like, I broke my arm. I'm pointing at my arm, getting pissed. She, and she looks at my arm and is like, oh, okay, I'm calling an ambulance. And they got me. So I went. Anyhow, you know, long story short, when I got to the doctors, after they did all the uh, x-rays, he's like, we got to set it. Right. Right. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. And I held my stepdad's hand. I'll never forget. I looked over at him. And, that is <laughs> the strength of a parent is mm. never more apparent mm -hmm. than when you're going through something that is going to be excruciating. And they hold your hand mm. because the abuse that they can take. Oh, squeeze, man. I. Oh, that's. Yeah. All I've got to draw on is my master and commander procedure that happened on my foot with the, uh, the blisters. Mm. There's no local anesthetic. Just scissors on feet. Ah! Yep. Scissors on feet. That should, every time I mean, I, it's like the Civil War. I know. Every time I read something about the Civil War or see a movie or a documentary or anything, I just, I'm always riveted by the idea that these poor people had to have limbs sawed off. Mm. Mm -mm. And you're just drinking Jack. <laughs> or whiskey and, of some like, kind, yeah. Some sick bastard who's a doctor is like, I've gotten pretty good at this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they call me three saw Jimmy. You're biting One, down two, on three. a belt. You're yeah. like, oh, oh man. You don't want Ronald over there. Yeah. It takes him six. Hey, he's jagged. Oh, I messed up. <laughs> I got to start over. Sorry about this. Yeah. We're off to a libations Friday start, aren't we? Jeff Caver Show 933 Real Talk Radio War Channel TV. If you've been considering getting a new hot tub or upgrading your existing hot tub, now's the absolute best time to do it. Hot Spring Spas has the jets on full blast, and the prices right now have never been hotter. You can find huge savings at Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas, and we mean huge. For a limited time, you can get up to $5,000 off in instant discounts and rebates, plus 60 months no interest financing for qualified buyers. You heard that right, $5,000 in discounts, and that's not all. When you buy a hot spring spa from Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas, you'll get a free consultation to determine the best placement in your yard for installation, a free accessory of your choice, and install can be completed in just a matter of days. It's the most aggressive rebate program that's ever been available to buyers from hot spring spas. So stop by Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas on Greer Road today to check out their 12,000 square foot showroom with over 50 hot tubs on site. If you're ready to relax, Pinch and Petty Pools and Spas is ready to show you how. Let's take a minute to imagine all the things you can accomplish with help from Southeast Portable Buildings. Are you a hoarder? Hoard some more. Get a storage shed. Mother-in-law moving in with you? Put her in a shed out back. I'm kidding. Still working on that engine that you're going to finish from last summer? Uh-huh. Move it out to a new workspace with Southeast Portable Buildings. From she sheds and man caves to repair shops and trophy rooms, the possibilities are only limited to your imagination. Visit Southeast Portable Buildings today. Tallahassee's 30-year-old Funny Paper and American Legion Post 13 have joined forces to become Major Morale. The new ragazine has four more pages of post activities and military information that you probably never knew. But don't worry, it's still as politically correct and newsworthy as always. Okay, it's the same funny stuff, but it's still only available at the sponsor's locations like ABC Flooring, Tallahassee Automobile Museum, Krispy Kreme, or Keith Lawson Services. Providing professional services and maintenance for your home's most critical systems for over 39 years. If you need air conditioning, heating, or plumbing repairs, you will receive an upfront written quote, and the job will be done on time by the area's most advanced, highly trained professionals. Keith Lawson Services, Florida License CMC 125456 and CFC 1429197. Hey, this is your stomach speaking. It's time to eat again. We met deadlines and closed out the workday like a boss. The last thing you want to do is cook dinner. Even worse, pick up any fast food garbage. We need something good, something local. We need foodiestakeout.com. An all-star lineup of local spots like Smitty's Tap House, El Jalisco, Jerry's Cafe, Hangar 38, Metro Deli, and more. It's so easy. Just choose pickup or delivery and let's eat the good stuff. I'm growling already. Visit foodiestakeout.com. Clean, renewable energy means fresher air, healthier residents, new green jobs, and a stronger, more resilient community. How we get there is up to you. Share your input today to help shape the Tallahassee of tomorrow. Take the clean energy survey at talgov.com. A bed of Zaxby's crinkle fries, hand-breaded chicken, hardwood smoked bacon, and buttermilk ranch. It's the perfect comfort food. Pillow sold separately. Chicken bacon ranch loaded fries. Woo, saucy! 
We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Where uh, another, I think it was CBS, your credit where credit's due, they were discussing the transfer portal. And uh, they mentioned that um, I think the disparity between what Florida State has done in the transfer portal and what Clemson has done. Clemson has had two transfer portal players over the last few seasons. We've had 14. Um, well, we've had more than 14. I think it's like, Annually, it's like 14, 10, 12. Yeah, it's like it's, yeah. a, it's a ton. It's a ton, is the whole point. Wouldn't shock me if it was 35 or 40. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. In total, yeah. I'm, I'm saying each year it was around averaging like 12 to 14 or whatever it was. And, um, you know, there's a couple of ways to look at that. First of all, if you're an established program who's had success year over year for the better part of 10 years, uh, you don't have to hit the portal as much because you have quality depth. Clemson has been one of the preeminent programs in college football, unfortunately, for the better part of said decade, uh, has absolutely quality depth and not a need or not as big a need as other programs that are in the process or were in the process of being flipped. Florida State was in dire straits. This was a roster largely devoid of elite talent. Uh, when Mike walked in, he had to recognize that we were uh, a long ways away athletically from competing with the better teams on our schedule, most notably Clemson. And that was really frustrating, I'm sure, for him, but also for all of us. I remember many a day going out to practice and thinking to myself, as somebody who's been going to practices off and on in a variety of ways in covering Florida State since 1998 and going to games since long before that, but covering in the media since 1998, I remember thinking this is way worse than even the lost decade when it comes to trying to find players that are of Florida State's caliber on this roster, meaning the tradition of and the elite level. Like, you would go out there and you'd see guys that you thought, I mean, these are guys that would have been with me at Etsu. These are guys that have no business being at Florida State. This is not big-time college football. These guys are not. And I'm not naming names. I'm just saying you'd look around and go, nope, nope, nope. And it became all the more apparent, and it was glaringly obvious and painful the second you saw Jermaine Johnson. Because I remember that day saying to you, well, there it is. That's what it's supposed to look like, and he's the only one out here that looks like that. Only one. There's nobody else out here that looks like that. Now there are lots of guys on this roster that look like that. Yeah, agreed. And now that Keon Coleman is another member of the wide receiver core, at any given time, you're going to have multiple NFL bodies on the field on offense on defense defensive interior wise yep check that box jared verse at end yes patrick payton down the line i think yes then in linebacker in the secondary you go all right i see some maybes i really like the class of defensive back that we're bringing in now quinn Darius jones and kj kirkland are two names that we got very familiar with in spring camp that's correct they look the part they do look the part they look like the next breed and that's the thing also where I'm excited to see Rawls and Conrad Hussey come in for fall camp because apparently Conrad Hussey is the best safety that we recruited this class. 
most highly regarded safety, closest to being able to be an immediate contributor. If that's true, and we've already seen what Quindarius and KJ can be, well then, sir, I mean, they're flipping that side of the ball as well. So we'll see. Yeah, I, I think that the heavy reliance on portal players is um, is slowly going to wane significantly uh, here, but they will always utilize it more aggressively than those that are sort of antiquated in their way of thinking about the transfer portal. I think Clemson is. I think Clemson has been largely antiquated in the way that they view the portal. Uh, Dabo's holding on uh, to some uh, bygone era uh, of college football. He frequently reveals that uh, with every word that he speaks, uh, which is good for us. I like to see people slow to adopt to change. I love when guys get behind uh, because they're hellbent on staying steadfast to a way of doing things that has um, you know, been passed by. I, I like that. Now, good, good. Continue to be antiquated. Continue. Uh, you'll get lapped. I got to say that the group that I'm most excited to see, maybe not this year, but next, is from the uh, professional perspective, that offensive line. I think next year you can put an ink, provided that they're here on campus and there's no shenanigans in the portal. <laughs> right. Julian Armella and Lucas Simmons together on the offensive line. Those are two absolute NFL products. The funny part is, I don't know that they're top five options this season, but if you're just looking at it from pro potential, those two guys probably have the most pro potential. I mean, Jeremiah Byers would be in that discussion. Maybe Casey Roddick, if he can learn to sure, snap the ball. Sure. <laughs> but you've got you've got guys that are going to play on Sundays in your two deep, and they're probably not even starting. I think Robert Scott's going to be drafted. I don't know that he's got a long NFL career in front of him. And ditto for some of those other guys who are going to be on the line. Like Bless Harris, maybe. I don't know about that size that it translates to the next level. He's great for us. Yeah, but I don't know that that will go. Same thing with Meech. Big Meech is awesome, but is Big Meech a, a starter on a Sunday for one of the 32 teams? Right, I right. don't know. Yeah. So the fun part is we are cultivating more and more NFL guys at the skill positions. The trenches now, I think, are only going to get better for us in the offensive line as time goes on. And you'll see that maybe in the 2025 NFL draft, the 2026 NFL draft, that we're going to have offensive linemen taken in the top 40, which is pretty cool. Yeah, I... um. I'm looking forward to the next two to three drafts. Uh, I think we've got a lot, and hopefully beyond that. Next but, year's littered. I mean, it's going to be a ton of Knowles going next year. It's the antithesis of what we just watched this in this last draft. That was, and that's hard to take, but it's always a great indicator of where your program's at. I really believe that. I, it, when you got one guy getting drafted and it's in the fifth round, it tells you there's a reason why you weren't any good until last year. Uh, for the previous five, you weren't good. Yeah, well, exactly. We don't have <laughs> we don't have elite level talent. Yeah, I think if Keon is a one and done, he's got two years to play. But if he goes off this season and uh, he decides to ride, you're looking at six players on offense that are going to get drafted. Maybe seven, because you've got Jordan's going to get drafted. I, I don't think it'll be early, but no, he's going to get drafted. Get drafted, yeah. Johnny and Trey and Keon and Jaheim Bell and Byers. Maybe Meech, maybe Roddick, not sure. Robert Scott probably. Okay, maybe it's seven then. Maybe yeah, it's seven yeah. or eight, just from the offensive side. And we know that Jared Verse is going to and Fabian Lovett, and if Daryl Jackson does what he's supposed to do, I mean, good Lord, sir. Yeah, it's going to be a fun draft, and that's what you're hoping to build upon and see year, year in over in. You, you want to get to that place where you're like, yeah. I mean, no, you, you're not going to churn eight, nine guys out to the – you know, pros every year, but you ought to be in a position to have a handful almost every year if you're an elite program. You know, Alabama does that every year. Georgia does that every year. Ohio State does that every year. We, we ought to get back to that place. Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. Your local news now. For those in need of pet supplies, Tallahassee Animal Services is set to host its yard sale on Saturday. Available pet supplies will include leashes, collars, tops, beds, crates, and more. The yard sale will be held Saturday, June 3rd from 8 a.m. to noon at Tallahassee Animal Services, located at 1125 Easterwood Drive at Tom Brown Park. Donations are accepted daily from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. For those in need of learning life-saving skills, Leon County's Press the Chest training event is taking place Saturday from 10 to noon at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. The 
annual event hosted by Leon County EMS invites people of all ages to learn adult hands-on CPR, child CPR with breasts, adult and child choking relief, and AED awareness. Participants will also receive an American Heart Association CPR Anytime Kit, which contains a CPR mannequin, DVD, and educational materials. To register, visit leoncountyfl.gov. This is Rachel and A with your Roll Talk 93.3 Local News Update, brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check the battle line at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Carol Foster with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Mostly sunny today with our high nearing 88. Clear skies overnight tonight with a low around 68. A slight chance for some rain on Saturday, otherwise sunny with a high nearing 90. And more showers early Saturday night than partly cloudy with a low around 68. A chance for some rain throughout the afternoon on Sunday, otherwise sunny with a high of 89. And partly cloudy 66 Sunday night. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Currently, it's 77 degrees. Barry knows cool. He's keeping you comfortable. This is Kyle, service manager from Barino Heating and Air. Schedule an appointment from your mobile device to learn about our total comfort service program. With guaranteed same-day service, 15% off necessary repairs, and $25 Barry Bucks to use towards air filters and other products. Turn to the experts at Carrier and Barino Heating and Air. Any day, anytime, anywhere. Online at BarinoAC.com. Water license, CAC 1816-186. Do, 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 my man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears, what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse? Um, <laughs> Just a slow burn. Slow, little oh, burn. This thing I mean, just finished could, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live 30 years. <laughs> I thought you were going to say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay. You know? Mouse it is. Gordo bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at orangetheoryfitness.com. And, and really uh, let everybody know we're, we're happy to be joined uh, as partners with the Zaxby's. They've come on board with the Jeff Cameron Show, and I just want to welcome them in. I'm excited to have them. It's going to be fun. It was really cool to uh, be introduced to that function when we had the pregame show two years ago. It was always in the morning, right? It was always yeah. 9 a.m., mm-hmm. but they were ready to go. And they were feeding us, and it was a great way to start the day with that smell in the studio. I'd have so. like 40 of those fingers and think to myself, I can't eat the rest of the day. What am I doing? What am I doing? The torchy sauce is so good. But then from there, it just became kind of a, a thing. And now we're all working together. It's pretty cool. Billy Ho out here crying uh, yesterday. Did you see that? Billy Horschel wept yesterday, guys, after shooting an 84. A couple things stand out to me about that. Uh how good are pros like that is as dreadful a day as any pro can have to the point where they cry after shooting an 84 like he can't shoot any worse right and it's an 84 on a brutally difficult golf course yeah where the lead was at four under par yeah yeah Yeah. 84 and he said something technical which made me laugh because he goes my cut's just not doing what i wanted to do (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> there are more important things to be weeping over well uh, yeah i I'm, just can't get it to cut man yeah the frustration's got to be overwhelming i don't I mean it's cutting but it's not it's doing not, what it should it's not cutting the way it's supposed it's to cut it's not the same yeah yeah i've been frustrated before in a lot of realms very frustrated it takes a lot to make you cry though usually that's like loss i don't know where that pull hook came from <laughs> 
usually it's like a like what personal loss, you know, a family member passes, a dear friend, something like that. Your kid accomplishes something amazing. You can have happy tears, things like that. Yeah. Golf never made me cry. It's not my profession. It's not my profession, but I mean, come on, man. It's one thing if you're out there on a heavy heart. We've seen golfers oh, trying to play through something. With Tiger it. after his dad passed. Oh, well, I remember one year, uh, was it Jason Day? It was uh, Somebody wept after winning, um, and I just remember as he was talking, he revealed why it was something to do with his sister, I think. And I was like, oh, man, okay, this, this is tough. Those kinds of moments, I'm not making fun of anybody, of yeah, course, but yeah. come on, man. It just wouldn't cut. It's not cutting. It's just not cutting. <laughs> I mean, I'm fighting it pretty good, but <laughs> get it together, man. Get it together. That's tough. It's frustrating. Got it. Get angry. If you're, uh, hey, you could be despondent, but oh, you can, no need yeah, leaving. you can get up there and be like, you know, I, I haven't been able to practice the way that I want to. I'm going through some things. I've got, you know, da 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 da. And then you get a little choked up talking about it. You'll be like, all right. It's not cutting. <laughs> uh, woo! Just not cutting. Hey, Jeffrey Johnson, I don't know what we did. I don't even see a comment. Woo! But uh, there you go. I love it. Thanks for your help. Uh, closer we get, the more excited I get about the 2023 season. We have a lot of stuff cooking with recruits to land us in the top three, maybe five class of 2023. Shout out to the ladies softball team. Absolutely. I, I mentioned that's not true, guys, in the chat. I opened with softball dominating. Get it together. It was the lead. It was the first thing I said. Mark, it was. You're wrong. I talked about learning a lot. I talked about this being a weird week for me. And then I was like, how about the Knowles? No problem last night. I, I wasn't was, worried about it last I was right night. About it. That's what you brought uh, up. And I, I said, was right. I was right about it is what I said. That's yep. what I said. There's no need to break down an eight to nothing ass kicking. There's nothing to break down. It's self-evident. They pitched well. They hit well. There you go. That's a wrap. Eight to nothing. It was easy. They kicked their ass. That's all there is to say. By the way, I don't get all that excited when the program is at this level because they've consistently been elite. So when they win a game while they're out there, I'm not falling all over myself. I'm ready for them to go back after another national championship. So as it happens, that's great. That's great. We will start to talk about it the closer that happens. Utah with a one to nothing lead over Washington in the second. That's for whoever has the right to Correct. play us. Who, who's about to get their ass kicked by us is what that is. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Boom. We weather permitting, of course. So that's it. Yeah, they dominated. And um, I did, I don't know why, other than my belief in Sandercock. Um, Which has changed. Uh, again, her, her numbers against Oklahoma State when they went to Stillwater yeah. in March, seven runs allowed in eight innings. Yesterday, a completely different story. There were some, some issues. Some jams to get out of, but she got out of them. A couple of them were defensive issues. We had an issue third base. Yeah. But she pitched around him. No, I it saw was you. never. It never looked like it did in March when she had big-time issues at Oklahoma State. Yeah, and I, I'm just telling you, like, I don't know why. There's something about her besides her unique skill set and, and talent that's obvious. But the last three times that I've watched her pitch, you just you sense that there she knows. When, when you've got a great player who's feeling it, who's locked in, yeah. it could be a release point, it could be whatever it is, and they know it, and they have the confidence and the successes previous, I love, I mean, you ride that all day long in terms of, like, if you're going to bet on a team or bet on a player or bet or whatever, you know, you can, you can emotionally investing in this team with her on the mound is an easy deal. I'm not saying she uh, can't be beat. I'm just saying when she's right, she is a well, dominant player. But she also understands that this is a moment. This is the most consequential moment of her playing career. You know, there is professional softball, but it doesn't have eyeballs on sets and crowds like the College World yeah, Series does. Yeah. Like, you know, we have over at Joanne Graff for the regionals and the super regionals. 
And if they win it all, it's very simple to point back to the moment that it was destined was the perfect game when you only scored one run yeah, you had the to have whole it. day. Had so to have it. You spent the one run in a good place because you paired it with a perfect game. You know, in 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 so from here, that that's by the way, again, all jokes aside and chiding aside, the truth is this softball team and program has been so consistently good and elite that I, I you know. You just assume these kinds of successes out there. You assume they're going to get back out there. That's why last year was such a shock. They're too good not to just consistently go out there and be a player out there. And so I think, you know, that's obviously they kind of did. That's where our expectations are. It's not unfair to have the bar raised that high. That's what they've proven to us. That's what they deserve. There's a good article on our website, warchant.com, in which Ira outlines what Cat has done over, I think, her previous 10 starts but the astronomical numbers and the shift that has gone from, you know, a very, very good mm-hmm. player at this level to one of the elite arms. And that's really cool right now because Florida State has needed that. Offense didn't need it last night, though. Again, that might have been a watershed moment to get through the regional because they hit the ball fine against Georgia, and they really hit the ball last night against Oklahoma State. Oh, whole lot of get you some, plus a face tag. I like that. I wouldn't have apologized later on. Get you some more of that. Slide in here. Got to make the play. Put your face tag on. Stay I'd at, be face tagging everybody. Why don't you stay at first next mm-hmm. time? Get you some. That was great. Uh, Optimus Climb writes, can we talk FSU's place overall in college football? Would FSU not be a top five brand in the SEC and top three in the Big Ten? Yeah, the three brands would be us, Michigan, and Ohio State. Those would be the three biggest brands in the Big Ten. That's not, that, that's not really debate. Yeah, agreed. Uh, Maybe Penn State 20 years ago before we found out about Sandusky, but not anymore. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think they've waned from being uh, an upper crust program, but, uh, but their brand, brand power, yeah, their brand has suffered greatly. Yeah, well, they also haven't been elite in a long time. Uh, we have a national championship as recently as 2013. Oh, that's fair. In I'm, 29 straight wins during that stretch into 14. So there yeah. are times you don't want to touch a brand. Penn State was kind of it was tough. For a while tough there. to yeah, tough to exalt Penn State during the. Uh, Revelation of ignored. Don't child really rape. hear, uh, yeah, Joe Paterno's name come up anymore mm. when they talk about the greats. Mm. That affects the brand. The toughy, toughy. Uh, going back to that though, if, if you were going to rank the brands, I would just tell you, uh, as far as the TV numbers go, Florida State is number one on that in terms of the teams we just mentioned. I mean, all time great teams, all time upper echelon college football. Yeah, Ohio State, and Michigan have more cachet than Florida State. Uh, Florida State, though, because of their emergence when they emerged, it yeah. was as college football became a giant. It was not. Prior to, like, 1990, college football was not this behemoth. It wasn't even close to being what it is now. I will take your word for that. Well, that's just true. It wasn't. It was It was kind of a niche thing uh, in the South. Uh, yes, out in California. Yes, a couple of Big Ten schools like Michigan and Ohio State. Yes. Obviously, you had Notre Dame, your parents, your grandparents, everybody, you know. And then if you were thinking about the old Big 8 or the old Southwest Conference and then later on the Big 12, then, you, yeah, Oklahoma, obviously, and Nebraska and Texas, big, big teams. But it was not – college football now, when you look at these numbers, it's the second most popular sport in America. I mean, it's, it's football. It's the NFL is number one, and then it's college football. It's crazy. I mean, that, that's where it's come. It was – fourth or fifth on the list for a very long time. Uh, there was a time in this country uh, for half of my life, I'd say, maybe, yeah, probably about half my life where baseball was secured as the number two after NFL overtook it. Baseball was number one in my childhood. It moved to number two as the NFL emerged as a, as a Goliath. Yeah, baseball was still number two when I was a kid. Yeah, in the 90s. baseball was long. Yeah, and then you had stretches where – uh, the NBA has been very popular, then it wanes, and it comes back with popularity. The the 80s uh, really did wonders for the NBA. Prior to that, it was uh, smoke-filled arenas, drugs, uh, tape delay. You yeah. didn't really see much of the NBA. But I love this game campaign. was brilliant, and the stars came out. And then Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson basically yeah. saved basketball and became uh, a, a giant uh, around the globe. Yeah, the passing of the torch, I think, was the baseball strike in the mid '90s, and mm-hmm, you know, ninety four. Obviously, the home run chase helped save it, brought it back. But but at that point, 
Jordan's Bulls had existed and they had won at least two in a row, if not they had overtaken. the first three. Yeah. The NBA had passed it. The NBA on NBC theme is quintessentially in, in my head yeah. as a kid. Yeah. And it, all those teams, the NBA had a golden era there too, even though... Because it, it was, was teams. It was, right. it was largely teams. And, and Michael ushered in an era where it became about the star, the individual. Well, but still, all of these teams had personalities, even though it was the Bulls for three, then it was the Rockets for two, and then the Bulls for three more. Right. You look at in the West and in the East. Oh, yeah. You had, Portland, Seattle, uh, Houston, it obviously, was the Lakers. Built for NBA Jam, where you had two or three players on each team. Yeah, but yes, absolutely. you had Kemp and Peyton, and you had oh, Reggie Miller on, and yeah. Smiths, and you had Alonzo Mourning. Mm -hmm. He played a couple places. But you had uh, Ewing and Starks. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. all of these teams. It was two or three guys who were studs. My favorite of that era. I loved Allen Houston. He was a great player. Allen Houston, Allen Houston was, a, was good. He was a really good player. He had a big three for you, too. Uh um, the rattle home against the Heat in yeah, game it was, five. It's huge. Five. It's huge. Yeah. Uh but but in terms of college football, back to my original point to answer this, Florida State benefited greatly uh from timing. Obviously, you give all the credit in the world to what Coach Bowden did and how he built this thing, but becoming an elite college football program when Florida State became an elite college football program has resonated to this day around the country because it was simultaneous to the rise of college football. So we dominated the sport at a time when the sport was rapidly ascending uh, as a favorite in this country. Hour number two, forthcoming. Now that the brutal North Florida and South Georgia winter is over. Okay, we had a couple of cold snaps, but still, now is the best time to give your AC system a good cleaning. Dust can build up in your AC system, leading to higher utility bills and poor air quality. That's when it's e and to the rescue. Our 21-point inspection and tune-up costs only $99 and gets things working their very best. So before the summer hits, get your AC spick and span. Call e and Heating and Air Conditioning today. Wood & Glass has been taking care of families since 1945. Experienced, reliable professionals who offer only the best, like Widden's top-of-the-line bath enclosures. Eye-catching storefronts are a specialty at Widden & Glass, and they provide precise installation. Wooden & Glass, Tallahassee's first family in glass. Online at WiddenGlass.com. Call 850-222-5781. A cup of joe, java, brew, go-go beans, brainwater, liquid lightning, wakey-wakey juice, whatever you call your cup of coffee, you're missing out if it's not grassroots coffee. At grassrootscoffee.com, you'll find an easy way to order the best roasted coffee beans available. It's very simple. Choose the blend you want and how you want it ground, and the bag you receive will have the date your beans were roasted and packaged on it, all written by hand and signed by the roast master himself. You'll know that's as fresh as it gets. You can get grassroots outside of your house also at some of your favorite restaurants in town. Next time you're out to eat, try asking for Grassroots Coffee by name because there's a good chance they will have it for you. And if you own a business, Grassroots Coffee has options to stock your break rooms with all the productivity powder your team needs. Plus, like some other options that you'll find at work, Grassroots Coffee actually is a part of our community. Get to grassrootscoffee.com today and get yourself a treat. Some locally owned, locally roasted, and locally loved Grassroots Coffee. This is Dr. Ryan Finn in Tallahassee. It's time to spring into health. Spring brings neck pain, back pain, headaches, and allergies. We have specific adjustments that can help with these issues. This is Dr. Shannon Lord. Don't let neck pain, back pain, headaches, or allergies stop you from enjoying the sunshine state. Spring into action and make your appointment online at finchiro.com. F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. That's F-E-N-N-C-H-I-R-O.com. Remember, your chiropractor loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. There's fun to be had every night at the Corner Pocket. Take home prizes on Trivia Tuesdays and Beer Bingo Thursdays. And kickstart your weekend with Martini Fridays. Plus, happy hour runs every weekday and game day specials every time the Knolls take the field. Watch all the best games at the Corner Pocket's Vegas Wall. Featuring 560 inches of flat screen TV heaven. Oh, really? The best food, the best drinks, and the best place to watch all the games. Tallahassee loves the Corner Pocket. Coming up next, more of the Jeff Cameron Show, live and local on Real Talk 93.3, WVFT, Greta Tallahassee. 
This is Brett Musburger's Action Update. Juice Reel, the betting intelligence tool that's making better betters. Open the App Store and get your hands on Juice Reel. Start betting smarter. Juice, R-E-E-L. Juice Reel. Now, here are the latest lines from my guys in the desert. The Nuggets are up 1-0 on the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals after a win yesterday, Game 2 on Sunday. The Nuggets have opened up as a 9-point favorite. Overall, the Nuggets are now minus 800 to win the series. The Heat at plus 550. The Stanley Cup Final, it is getting underway tomorrow between the Vegas Golden Knights and Florida Panthers. Vegas is a minus 130 favorite for game number one tomorrow. Overall, Vegas is a minus 125 favorite to win the series. For the latest odds all the time, visit vcin.com. I'm Matt Pauley. This has been your action update on Tallahassee's Real Talk Station, Real Talk 93.3. Power Mill Training Academy equips motivated athletes focused on baseball and softball with the specific tools to reach their true potential. Now, you'll read that if you go to their website, but I'm here to tell you that, look, whether it's your daughter wanting to play softball, your son wants to play baseball, or maybe they just want to have fun and get the most out of their abilities, and that's where Power Mill comes into play. They've got coaches and camps that teach for every level of play for your son or your daughter. To learn more, go to PowerMillSports.com. As a truck driver, I've learned how important road safety is. I know that large trucks need more time and room to stop. That's why I always hang back and follow other vehicles at a safe distance. Everyone can help keep our roads safe. So next time you're driving, try to remember to always give trucks extra space when you merge in front of them. Let's all plan to share the road safely. Learn how at sharetheroadsafely.gov. Do, 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 do. My man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears, is what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse? Um, <laughs> Slow burn. Slow, slow oh, burn. This thing I mean, just finished could, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live 30 years. <laughs> I thought you were going to say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay. You know? Mouse it is. Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. A bed of Zaxby's crinkle fries, hand-breaded chicken, hardwood smoked bacon, and buttermilk ranch. It's the perfect comfort food. Pillow sold separately. Chicken bacon ranch loaded fries. Woo, saucy. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory Fitness is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience a more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Hot. Broadcasting live from Florida's capital city, this is the Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness on Real Talk 93.3. Now, stop what you're doing and listen closely. It's time for the Jeff Cameron Show in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
I had them pegged and I put in little amplifiers. Everything you could. And it's just that low. Yeah, shake, yeah, shake, shake, yeah, shake, yeah. yeah. Did you listen to the, during the break? Did you guys listen to the share the road safely.gov spot? Did not start like it's going to be uh, a South Park commercial, like a, like a funny bit from South Park. It's so perfect. How are you recording that spot and somebody doesn't go, I think we're going to have to get somebody other than Hank. I don't think Hank wasn't the right choice. I know you wanted a real trucker, but we got to get somebody a little bit better here. The best part about that, and I hope it's in the block every day. I, this is my new favorite Well 50 PSA. Because that one was a classic. Mm. Well 50. Well, it, it, it got me it, in trouble. You got you. Well, not really. It's somebody got furious with you and that I cut up Well 50 because it's absurd. Mm. Who writes that copy and says, yeah, well, I'm going to go 50? with that? Yeah. Is that the PSA is 38 seconds. That doesn't fit anything <laughs> no, anywhere. No. They got to be 15s, 30s, or 60s. I thought it was fake. I thought it was a South Park ad. It was great. I thought it was like a bit. It's it's hilarious um, to listen to that guy. Time was. Time was. <laughs> Roads used to be safer, but now they're not. That's why I keep my oh, distance. Oh, man. I said it last hour. I'm going to say it again this hour. Here we go, my man. Danny over at Zaxby's and the fine folks at Zaxby's on board with the Jeff Cameron Show, and we greatly appreciate it. Just so you know, their signature sandwich a big old chicken sandwich is delicious. Towers above all the others in size and deliciousness. In fact, Zaxby's signature sandwich. It's an extra large hand breaded filet and three thick cut pickle chips. It's fun to say. A split top bun. Comes with your choice of Zaxby sauce or spicy Zax sauce. Zax sauce. Or you can get some other sauce on the side if you want. They've got about uh, 15 others. Bunch of sauce. It's big, it's delicious, only at your neighborhood Tallahassee Zaxby's. Tallahassee Zaxby's, a proud Golden Chief booster for 18 years. Go Knowles. I want one of those right now. I do. I would do it. <laughs> Sometimes a chicken sandwich just calls your name. Yeah, I, I haven't had one in a minute. This is the golden era of chicken sandwiches, and Zaxby's holds up. That's the thing that you can say it's best about them, because there's... I mean, it's like podcasting. When that took off, everybody had a podcast. Now everybody's got a chicken sandwich. Which is good. Sometimes we all benefit. That's right. Let that competition thrive. Oh, you want to make a chicken? I'll try your chicken sandwich. I will. I'll do it. It's not better than Zaxby's. I'll give it a go, though. Yeah, more access, not less access to people. That's good. That's fine. If they want to put themselves out there in the podcast sphere, that's good. I can learn more about this guy or that guy or that gal. Nope, yep, yep, like this one, don't like this one. I want hundreds of podcasts at all times. So I know you're a big documentary buff. Huge. Something that was released the biggest. recently that uh, you got me, uh, <laughs> that I can't wait to watch, is the American Gladiators 30 for 30. I just watched it. This is my childhood. I just watched it. So it was. The most predictable <laughs> result that you could imagine for those people is exactly how their life played I'm out. I'm sure. I, I caught the first 10 <laughs> minutes with Malibu, and Oof. I'm like, whoo, all right. Well, road hard, put up wet. Got some bunk beds, do you? Yeah. I see. <laughs> I see you working. Got some bunk beds. So it was three things in the summer that I would watch as a kid. Mm -hmm. Sports Center, mm -hmm. American Gladiators, mm -hmm. and then the NFL Films recap of every team 16 times in offseason. Yeah, and they somehow in those NFL Films, as we've noted before, could make a 3-13 and 13 campaign sound like a team was on the cusp of winning the Super Bowl. Well, because they would gloss over seven straight losses. Oh, yeah. It'd be like, and in week nine, That's right. the dream came to be. After yeah. seven straight losses on yeah, the road. Yeah, they just, yeah. They hosted the 2-7 and seven Minnesota Vikings. A dominating performance <laughs> that led to, yeah, yeah, yeah. That song if it were on i've just riveted immediately touchdown eric red touchdown <laughs> eric red box lead by the way so the uh when you go back to watch your american gladiators 30 for 30 which i've seen um uh, i did the uh I, I i i did the thing where i you know how i like to predict just solely based on the exterior you want to know if you when you judge people you judge them correctly right right yeah. and i was like 
ding, ding, ding. Got this right years ago. It has all happened. That guy's broken down, hooked up, hopped up on goofballs, living on a ranch. This dude over here, yeah. I just want to know what happened to Turbo, Laser, and Gemini. Those are the three biggies. One of them, you're going to be like, oh, no. Oh, really? Yeah. Probably Laser. So we'll he's, see. um. there's, there's, uh, there's, there's a guy that is just, his knees and arms don't work anymore. <laughs> and you're kind of like, yeah, he walks. And they were paid 50 bucks, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, it's hilarious. The guy that was the uh, engineer, the mastermind behind it all is the biggest sleazeball of all time. And he wanted, he's a, he's a lot like uh, Vince McMahon, like the worst human being you can imagine. It, it's like that, you know, making sure they're all on steroids, making sure they're addicted to things, making sure, yeah. You're fired. Yeah, it's just, it's awful. It's awful, but it's it's perfect. Yesterday, so I see that somebody in the chat noted that they're concerned uh, about corner. And, um, and he says, I know we like Green and Cypress, but that group just looked really bad against Florida and OU. We made uh, Ricky Pearsall and Marvin Mims look like Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, and it's a fair point. We we ran into a, a listener yesterday. Jay, how are you? Nice to meet you yesterday, buddy. Uh, who's a fellow Lakewood High School alum? But uh, he was he was saying, "What about the secondary?" And that's not the first time that's come yeah. up when I meet people out and about. Mm -hmm. They bring up the secondary. It is my concern too. It is the number one reason that I don't talk about this team. Uh, alongside championship, national championship aspirations. I think they can win the conference. They can maybe make the college football playoff. That's the high end of what Florida State will do this year. I don't think they're elite after you get past the line of scrimmage on that side of the ball. I think they're average at linebacker at best, average. And I think that they're below, maybe maybe below average in terms of championship level play in the secondary. I don't think they're great. I don't. I, there's not a single great player in that secondary. There's not a single great player. I would agree with you. I think Renardo will be solid and above replacement level at any position that he plays. I think that's, that's the player I feel most certain about right now. Second in line, actually, is Greedy Vance. I thought Greedy had an excellent great camp. camp. Great camp. And he's come a long way. He was always grabby. Didn't and have slow. much technique. Wasn't fast. But, Tom, you know, this this is that, that group. Let me tell you, the, the linebackers in the secondary, that group, really puts to the test this conversation. Uh, and, and that is, are people willing to have a real conversation about what Florida State is or is not? And I talked about this at the beginning. I said, look, we're now judging them against the backdrop of championship aspirations. It's no longer are we good. Is no longer can we have a 10-win season. No, that's in the rear view. We accomplished that last year. They were a good football team last year. Now you want aspire to great. You want to be dominant. You want to win national championships. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what we are when we're operating at peak efficiency at Florida State. It's not true of other programs, but it's true here. So it's not unreasonable. And when you look at them, you can say they're going to be, I think, elite on offense. I think they will be elite on offense. That is a championship-level offense. Now, they don't have that world-class difference maker, that game-changer at wide receiver. The, the, the sexy skill position player at receiver or running back, I like Benson a lot. Uh, is he transcendent? Is he, um, you know, a, a, a top-10 pick? At running back? Right. Is he in the conversation after this year with Dalvin Cook and Warwick Dunn? Probably not. Yeah. Probably not. I like him a lot. I like him a lot. Dude, we've had a lot of good running backs not named Dalvin Cook or Warwick Dunn. That's fine. But if you look at the numbers for single season performances, and I get that there's more offense now, we're going to run with a little bit more tempo, but that Trey kind of had an excuse me thousand yard season where he wasn't the starter for the first half. That shows you how dominant he could be on the stat sheet. Like him a lot. I think he's a very good football player. He may ascend to greatness. He good. might. He's got a shot. The offense is going. When they got Keon Coleman, this offense went from really, 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 really freaking good to awesome. I, I really think they're going to be awesome because they've changed the tight end room. You already know what your quarterback is. You've got a deep and talented offensive line. The offensive backfield is loaded. And now you've got two real difference makers at wide receiver, maybe a star at wide receiver. Okay, so I put that over here. I'm with you on that. Championship level in comparison offense. Gotcha. I just don't think they're that on defense at all. 
I think they're really good on the interior of the defensive line with some ifs. That's the problem. There are some ifs to the, even that statement because we don't know, first of all, whether or not you're going to even have the, the waiver that we need for this group to be as deep and dominant as we think they can be. And then I, for, for Jackson, so if he's, you know, if Daryl Jackson's not on this defense, is, is not eligible to play, it's still a good defensive line, but he makes it great, the interior. If he doesn't play, you're good. But with a lot of ifs, because we we still don't, I mean, again, the kid from Western Michigan, what the hell's his name? Fisk. Uh, yeah, Fisk, Braden. Um, so, you know, we haven't seen him play for us. We saw him out there running around, but he, he couldn't do contact. He's got the body type, but I don't know what he is at this level. He played at Western Michigan. So we'll see. So that's an if. Daryl Jackson right now doesn't have the waiver. It's an if. There is some uncertainty there. Even more uncertainty, I think, when you get back behind that group. You're also thin at defensive end. You're good. You're really good at defensive end with your two starters. Yeah. But you're really thin. One of those guys goes down. Eh, you get to be pretty damn average real quick. Linebacker, your two starters are solid. That's all they are. They're not elite. They're just solid. They're solid starters. And if they get hurt, you're screwed. They're not, there's nobody that I like all that much after that group of two. There's, there's some guys that you're like, okay, he, he'll play for you, and he's okay, but he'll get exposed uh, in coverage. That, that, that's, I think Omar Graham's got a shot. He's so early in his career that he could make that jump. But well, you don't want to have to have that. No, he's not ready to be a star, right? DeMarco yeah. Ward had a decent spring camp as well. But, yeah, these aren't – you see them and you know immediately right. type players. Right, they're, yeah. kind of, they're kind of average right now, and we'll see if they take the next step. And then in the secondary, I mean, look, I do believe – I will say this. I do think Shaheen Brown's going to have a real good season Um, because I don't think he was healthy. Well, I know he was not healthy. In spring. And so he just didn't make plays. He was just sort of okay. He was okay. But I've seen him be good. You have too. We all yeah. have. Yeah. So I know that, that good is in there. Yeah, and that Jamie Robinson role in this defense is perfect for his skills. Yeah, yeah. Perfect he's going to be good. I think if yeah. healthy, he's going to have a very good season. They've got a couple of freshmen. I think that by the end of the year might be able to help. But September is what matters well, you the two, most. Your biggest games are two in the first four, year, uh, four yeah. games. So. The hard that, part that's is, where we're at with this team is that they're going to be championship level elite on offense. And I think they'll be good on defense. I need them to be great if we're going to aspire to win a national championship. Yeah, the hard part here is how do you how do you reconcile two different things? One is that the game is skewed towards offense and, and quarterbacks putting up big numbers and receivers putting up big numbers and point totals being in the upper 20s, lower 30s. Like that's kind of the standard if you have a really good offense, is that you should expect to score around 30 points, give or take, every single week. So how do you reconcile that against our expectations for an elite defense? If we had two shutdown corners to go along with this defensive line, of course we're going to be really, really good, but you'd still probably give up 17, 24 points no, a game. a good offense, you're going to give up a lot of points, yeah. That's what I'm saying. So what are we trying to get out of this group? Are we trying to get out of this group a point total per game, and that's all that matters? We don't care how you arrive there? Or are, you, or are you looking to produce NFL draft picks at the position? I just, the game is so skewed towards the offense. I don't know that anybody really has multiple shutdown options in the secondary across the country. Because if they did, they would look different than everybody else. The game is already, it's, it's too skewed towards the offense is my point. Uh, Petro Cypress has got to be good. I think if he comes in and plays well, he didn't do anything in spring. Correct. We know what he is from his time at Virginia. We saw him play in big games and play well. I mean, it's all relative, big for Virginia. But he, he played well. I need him to be good for us, obviously. That stands to reason. But he, he wasn't good in the spring. He was just kind of there. And so uh, I know you're learning a new defense and you're you know figuring out your teammates and you're a veteran player in spring is kind of annoying. So I, I got you. It's very important, though, that we point that out because Greedy Vance growth towards the end of the regular season last year and through spring, he looks like a completely different player that showed up and was learning the defense. He, he was kind of a veteran when he was here. Yeah. And yet you thought within you know two weeks of camp, at least I did, his first camp, that that's not going to play, man. He's not quick enough. He's, he's going to get called for defensive holding or pass interference. Every time he's in a one-on-one -on -one situation, now he's turned into somebody that I think in the slot is a really good cover option, considering that we have a lot of shifty 
fast guys underneath that he would go against every day. That's legit impressive, what he did. But that shows you that it might take some time in this scheme to come up to speed. So that would be how I would Also defend. have a new defensive backs coach. Exactly. This is how I would defend Fentrell Cypress not doing much so far. Yeah, but not. it is fair to say he has not done much through one spring camp. No, I'm not making any assumptions about who or what he is either uh, as a player. I, I I don't look at that spring as uh, I look at somewhat indifferent. I just noted that he didn't really make any plays. Yeah. He was just kind of like, eh, eh, we'll see. Uh, I, I, I'll take it back. He made a few plays. He just never consistently made plays. When he made a play, you go, oh, oh yeah, there right. it is. There it is. Yeah, you were kind of like, oh, uh, it's good to see that. You, you good didn't to say see that. Correct. We have uh, the group of the War Chant staff next to each other. Yeah, we're and all when, stand there, yeah. When there's somebody who's consistently dominant in practice, I believe one of us will say, that's what he does. That's what the hell he does. For Fentrell Cypress, it was, oh, nice play. It wasn't, that's what he does, guys. Just forget it. Set it and forget it. What point total for the defense would you be happy with? Is it a per game question, Tom, or for the season? Uh, if it's a per game uh, point total, I think we did this yesterday a little bit. Um, it's got to be low 20s if you're going on the 12-game average. There are per, too many bad offenses that you're facing. Well, you're going to dominate some teams like you did last year. I mean, good Lord, you beat Miami 45-3. to three. You beat Syracuse like a drum. You shellacked Georgia Tech, and you were just going through the motions. Um. Listen, I think the interior of the defense is that good. Uh, I do. If if every and that's the if if Daryl Jackson's playing for yep. money, meaning this is his money year, and you know, obviously you've got an elite top ten pick type player at defensive end, which we do in Jared Verse. They're going to change what's possible because it is, you know, second and eight a lot. Yeah, it is. You know, that you're going to dictate terms. You're going to constantly be facing offenses behind the chains. I think if I were facing Florida State, by the way, I don't know that I would line up and try to run the ball. I'd spread them out and throw it, and I would really challenge the linebackers in coverage because they're not good, and I would uh, challenge this secondary if I had the personnel to do it. That's where Florida State's going to have to prove it against teams that can throw the football. If you want to run against us, good luck. I know last year you could. If you were any good at all up front on the offensive line, you could run against us last year. This is where that defensive line changes the game this year. But when we're deciding on the points per game discussion, one of the problems is that your offense is going to score a ton, and they're probably going to play pretty quick. I think they're going to play up-tempo. So teams are going to have more chances. You really need to go points per possession. You really need to look at yards per play metrics. Those kinds of things are going to tell you more about what this defense is or is not instead of just total points. I think you could give up 24 to 27 points a game uh, if, if we're just looking at how many opportunities teams are going to get in garbage time and, and, and how many times that you're going to beat somebody, you know, 49 to 24 or something like that. It's probably going to happen a lot. Uh, so I, I, I think the metric that I would use to judge them is different. Yeah, I hear you there. I also would say this and, and we've talked about this about linebackers how it pertains to linebackers if that defensive line is deeper and more talented we think it's going to be if some of the ifs pan out like the waiver for daryl jackson and Braden fisk is at 100 percent for fall camp we expect that to be the case that is a linebacker's best friend to have a clean lane to operate oh, yeah, in yeah, yeah. to get downhill to not have to guess to not have to be put in conflict by the most basic of plays that are coming at you you got to make a choice and you look like a fool if you make the wrong one it is also the best friend of a defensive back if you've got a healthy and good defensive line. Jared Verse, point blank, was not healthy for a huge chunk. Right. Of obviously, last Fabian year. Levitt wasn't healthy for the entire season. You think that the Wake Forest game, you know, the offense looked a little bit different in the first half and the second? Why was that? They used Jared a hell of a lot more in the second half. Yeah. Magically, we look a lot better, and you're in position to make some plays, and you do get some stops. So I think all of these guys in the back seven are going to look better as long as the defensive line is healthy. It's their best friend because you don't have time and you're in obvious down and distance situations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it, our own NFL team. A lot of the same secondary members were on the Bucks from the championship team to last year. Last year, they looked average the championship level team, or I'm sorry, the Super Bowl champion team. That defensive back group was elite. Well, the pass rush was amazing yeah, the year yeah, of the they championship. Got, they got to the quarterback. There yeah. was no pass rush last year. So you look like a fool if you've got to cover for multiple seconds. And hopefully we don't have to do that as much. Dean did have one of his best years, though. He did, he despite good, all of yeah, that. He had a good year. 
just just to decide. But Murphy Bunting looked good, uh, and, yeah, and yeah, you're yeah. like, I don't know if he's good or not. Well, I mean, if JPP's healthy and you have Shaq Barrett, he's going to look a hell of a lot better. Yeah, it changes the dynamic a little bit. Yeah. Same thing, I think, would go for Jerrion or Renardo or Greedy or all these guys. I just, yeah, but I think we could objectively say that there's no shutdown corner of this group so far. I don't, I don't see anybody that you're like, oh, that guy is Jalen Ramsey. You don't, you don't see that. I mean, you could look at Jalen Ramsey when he's, he, he was here and go, man, now I, he, there was a ton of help, but we knew within five minutes. Yes, it, correct, correct. I, I get emotional about how we have not had a shutdown corner in so many years as well. But I would say that when we faced Oregon, we still gave up a boatload of points with a shutdown corner. Like, yeah. That's just, that's well, we turned it over 15 times, but yeah. That's true. But even without the short field, they were going up and down the field on Yeah, us. they were. Yeah, offenses and, ruled the day. And that's Even the that thing. Georgia team last year gave up 30 in the SEC championship game to LSU. Gave up points to Florida. You know, all that stuff. Right. So it's just, it's hard for me to look at these two things and say they're mutually exclusive. What's the definition of a good secondary anymore would be the easy way to answer the question. The game is so skewed towards the offense that, it's very difficult to be a good secondary anywhere here, Georgia, Alabama, or UTEP. <laughs> that came out of nowhere. <laughs> I, got, my, my, I was sitting there thinking about the point I wanted to make, and all of a sudden, the very thing I made fun of, that once you turn 40, random massive cough sessions for no freaking reason. There was no reason. I was just sitting here, and all of a sudden, Aah! It's crazy. I'd like a doctor to tell me why that is. Do we need to apologize to Jim Lamar? No. He wasn't in his 40s when that happened. He wasn't? No. It was, uh, well, no, I don't think so. He was in his 30s. Jim was a coughing Jesse way back when you first met him. He can't help himself. He's always coughing. Jeff Cambridge, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, War Chant TV. When you need a plumber quick, how long is an acceptable time to have to wait? Uh, yeah, hey, it's the Millers again. Uh, just calling you about our little plumbing problem. Two hours? Hey, uh, we were hoping you can get here soon because the water is getting really bad. I mean, it's... Please hurry. Four hours? I know you said you were on your way, but, uh, honey, tell the kids to drink water. Eight hours? Don't worry about us. At MNL Plumbing, you'll never have to wait long for quality, dependable service right when you need it. At MNL Plumbing, we listen to our customers and our qualified technicians aim to achieve 100% customer satisfaction. So the next time you need plumbing work or repairs, think of the name MNL Plumbing, your local plumbing experts, commercial or residential. Give us a call 850-575-9393 or visit us online at mnlplumbing.com. MNL Plumbing for all of your plumbing needs. If you've been considering getting a new hot tub or upgrading your existing hot tub, now's the absolute best time to do it. Hot Spring Spas has the jets on full blast, and the prices right now have never been hotter. You can find huge savings at Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas, and we mean huge. For a limited time, you can get up to $5,000 off in instant discounts and rebates, plus 60 months no interest financing for qualified buyers. You heard that right, $5,000 in discounts, and that's not all. When you buy a hot spring spa from Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas, you'll get a free consultation to determine the best placement in your yard for installation, a free accessory of your choice, and install can be completed in just a matter of days. It's the most aggressive rebate program that's ever been available to buyers from hot spring spas. So stop by Pinch and Penny Pools and Spas on Greer Road today to check out their 12,000 square foot showroom with over 50 hot tubs on site. If you're ready to relax, Pinch and Petty Pools and Spas is ready to show you how. Hey, this is your stomach speaking. It's time to eat again. We met deadlines and closed out the workday like a boss. The last thing you want to do is cook dinner. Even worse, pick up any fast food garbage. We need something good, something local. We need foodiestakeout.com. An all-star lineup of local spots like Smitty's Tap House, El Jalisco, Jerry's Cafe, Hangar 38, Metro Deli, and more. It's so easy. Just choose pickup or delivery and let's eat the good stuff. I'm growling already. Visit foodiestakeout.com. Here at the Almond Joy Factory, where tropical vibes abound, we use soft, fresh-tasting coconut. The crunchiest almonds and delicious chocolate candy. Ah, but do you know what our most important ingredient is? Sometimes you feel like a nut. Sometimes you don't. Almond Joy's got nuts and something even way better than that. Yes, Almond Joy is made with almonds and joy. 
Do you struggle with occasional nerve aches in your hands or feet? Try Nervive Nerve Relief from the world's number one nerve care company. Nervive tablets contain alpha lipoic acid to relieve nerve aches, weakness, and discomfort. Plus B-complex vitamins to support healthy nerve function as you age. Live life with less nerve discomfort with Nervive Nerve Relief. Learn more at NerviveHealth.com. And try Nervive Pain Relieving Cream to block nerve pain signals at the source. Use as directed. We all want more energy, more strength, more results. Well, welcome to Orange Theory Fitness as you take a step towards feeling more alive today. Backed by science, Orange Theory's heart rate monitored workout is scientifically designed to keep heart rates in a target zone, spiking metabolism and increasing energy. Orange Theory is a one-of-a-kind group personal training workout resulting in more energy, visible toning, and extra calorie burn for up to 36 hours. Experience more vibrant life today with Orange Theory Fitness. To find out more, go to orangetheoryfitness.com. Welcome back to the Jeff Cameron Show, sponsored by Legendary Home Loans, a mortgage experience designed around speed, simplicity, and customer service. Before you buy your next home, contact our friend Shannon Young with Legendary Home Loans. Visit FSUHomeLoans.com, FSUHomeLoans.com. Memorial Jeff, Nikki Matsuyama's kicking ass out here at seven under, all from today's 65 after he was even par yesterday. Lots of people went low today. Rory McIlroy would be in the lead of this tournament had he not, was it tripled 18 yesterday? Yeah, triple. Get your ass. Get it together. Anyhow, he's at four under, six under. There are two. Dave Lipsky. Get the hell up out of here, Dave. It's a great name. Yeah, you're winning nothing. Patrick Cantlay there at minus six. He's won this tournament before. It was a gift. John Rahm tested positive for COVID. They told him, have a good day. And there it was. Patrick Cantlay walked into a win that he would not have won. <laughs> not even close. Just thought I'd point that out. Other big names on the day. I'm doing this for those that wager because I wager. And I needed Matt Fitzpatrick to do a whole lot better than he did yesterday. And he came through for me. Good job, Matthew Fitzpatrick. That ass sorry plus five yesterday. And we're all the way back to even par. Hey, that was a big, big shot on 18. Yeah, yesterday. remember that? We were watching that. That's right. So my man is at 68 in the clubhouse today. Good job, Matthew. Way to get it together. Hell. Um, John Rahm is right there with him, and he was much better. Call more cow coming on now. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Let's win daddy some money. Sounds like a good Sunday leaderboard two weeks out from the U.S. Open. Perfect. Nice little tune-up. I wonder what was going on yesterday. It's kind of weird. You had a lot of people do what I just described. Like, so yesterday, your leader was even par. Today, he goes seven under. Yesterday, Matthew Fitzpatrick was, you know, plus five. He ends up today at even par uh, for the tournament. Uh, Xander Schauffele yesterday shot a 77. Today, he shot a 66. Did those guys go out during a bad wave? That I don't know about. Like, did something happen? Was it like the British Open situation that infuriates me? Was George Whitfield throwing stuff at him as <laughs> what, they were swinging the golf? What was course? going on there yesterday? I saw where somebody else, by the way, uh, suffered uh, an attack via alligator, and I just love that. Again, listeners of this show alert me to these things whenever possible. Um, and I, uh, I saw that uh, this alligator attack occurred as uh, perhaps somebody was going to alleviate themselves oh take some relief yeah take some relief yeah. stance relief <laughs> and uh it ended up being uh they lost their arm i gotta double check if that's what that was but thanks guys i don't want you to think i'm not noticing yes i saw that story a lot of gator attacks this year that's good it's good we need more of them that old woman out walking her dog you cannot live on a pond where there is a huge gator and everybody knows it so much so that it has a name. And then you walk your poodle down by the pond and not think bad things are going yeah. to happen. Get it together, lady. Quite literally, that is where my parents live. She in, can't get it together now. In East Lake. And we have that, that golf course, Landsbrook, had, uh, I think it was an 18-footer, that it was just around. It was known An 18-footer? Well, that was on the course, but they could meander into the neighborhood where my parents live 
And there are gator signs everywhere in that pond. There are benches, but the benches are pretty far from the line of the water so that you can enjoy the view without the danger. But there is a sign every 10 feet that says, don't be dumb. Don't walk your dog near the water. Thank you. That's essentially what it says. I found the story. I was right. Sort of right. It's better than I thought. Florida man Jordan Rivera, whose arm was savagely ripped off by a 10-foot <laughs> alligator. <laughs> the writer chose to put savagely. I in added it. savagely. Oh, oh. I, there was no, it was, that's not the AP story. Dang. Was peeing in a pond because this bar line is too long. Yes. Nothing like drunkenly having your arm ripped off. The Florida uh, bar goer uh, has revealed he was mauled while peeing in said pond from his bed in Fort Myers in an intensive care unit. Jordan Rivera said that he only left busy Bandito's bar for a quick pee. Oh, no. In the early hours. We found Bandito's. Because the restroom line was too long. Quote, I saw a little lake out there. I was trying to go over there and take a pee. I didn't realize how big it was. Something happened where I either tripped on the ground below. That's called drunkenness, sir. Or I didn't see it right, and I kind of just went down. I ended up in the water in that moment. Goodness gracious, at night. And that's the last thing I remember. It was utter confusion. And then I woke up in a hospital. I was told that my arm had been ripped off by an alligator. At least you don't remember it. Yeah, if you're going to lose it, that's the way to do it. This is my favorite part of the article. I looked over and I saw my arm the way that it was, you know? And I was like, whoa. Whoa. That's a quote in the article. It was the craziest thing, like out of a movie. Um, he did go on to say, look, I didn't lose my life. I lost an arm. It's not the end of the world. Yeah, toughy buddy. You're not going to like this life without an arm. It's not as fun. Because you knew the difference. You did. Quote, they don't even serve food at the bar, so I couldn't have even served <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> he, he wanted to dispel a rumor that the real reason he got his arm ripped off was that he went to the lake to feed the gator. Some people said that's what happened. And he said, no, man, they don't even serve food at the bar. I couldn't have served that gator food even if I wanted to. It's just not true. <laughs> Who starts a rumor about some oh. dude getting his arm ripped off in the middle of the night? I just like that that's where his principle kicks in. It's like, hang on a minute. You know, I heard a lot of things about how this happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to set something straight. Let, let, let me tell you all, I wasn't out there feeding this gator. I was trying to pee, okay? It's very important that you know. This is also funny, by the way. He marveled at Bandito's regular. <laughs> he marveled at Bandito's regular Manny Hidalgo. Hidalgo, who takes his pet cat, Mr. Tom, Bar hopping with him. <laughs> he marveled at, <coughs> at Manny Hidalgo. Why? <laughs> for rushing over to pull him to safety oh. amidst the commotion. The first thing I would do is shake the man's hand. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Said Rivera. Perhaps forgetting that he'd lost his arm. Uh, the mauled man's mom, Teresa, also hailed those who raced to help, including Army veteran Trent Rozier, who told the Daily Sun that he used a belt as a tourniquet, kneeling on Rivera's shoulder to stop the bleeding while they waited for him to be airlifted to the hospital. Shouting like Kiefer Sutherland while he's doing so, no doubt. I called them angels. The chance of someone being there with a tourniquet to help me tourniquet this is a miracle. No, they're just fellow drunkards at the at the bar. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, it was a ten and a half foot gator. They euthanized it because uh, my because, my man here because he can't stand 
without falling into the water. His Great. Drunken ass fell into the lake, and now that gator's dead. Damn it, man. Uh, I just think that's awesome. There's a dude who's a regular at the bar with his cat, Mr. Tom, on his shoulder. Bandito's regular Manny Hidalgo, you are a hero. I think maybe that's a new shirt that we should sell. Bandito's regular Mr. Hidalgo, and then we can sell a cat that goes on the shoulder. Oh, well, the, just and the cat Mr. right there. Tom. Yep. Bandito's regular. Yeah. <laughs> that's so good. I can picture drinking a tall cold wind next to Manny and his Mr. Tom cat. Along with uh, this dude here, I never get the euthanized part of it, man. Like, well, about... what? Eh, they, they get a taste for the blood, Tommy. Well, I mean, if somebody stumbled into the wrong apartment or home or right. whatever, uh, they get shot. Yeah, and then they get beat up. What are you going to go as a cop walk in to the person who owns the home and shoot him? <laughs> Got up, uh, you know, they've had a taste of it. There you go. That's like uh, what was the name of the gorilla they had to shoot because the dumbass let their kid fall into the enclosure, Harambe or whatever that was. Remember that? Oh, is that what the Harambe uh, story? Yeah, is? that's what that was. I just always remember people saying drinks for Harambe. Yeah, and, yeah. It's yeah. tragic, though. I mean, there was not that poor gorilla. wouldn't do anything wrong. His dumbass let their kid fall in there, and they shot the poor gorilla. He wasn't even trying to kill a kid. You got to go. Yeah, why? Why? Because she's stupid? It's Jeff Cameron Show, 93.3 Real Talk Radio, Orchard TV. Your local news now. June 1st was the official start of hurricane season and leaders in Leon County and the city of Tallahassee want to make sure you're prepared. The county and the city each have hurricane checklists that can help you ensure you have everything you need before a storm comes. Kevin Peters, emergency management director for Leon County, says get your hurricane kit ready now so you don't rush to get items at the last minute. Some of the key things you should have in your kit are a way to get information and non-perishable food and water for three days for every member of your household. Hurricane supplies are tax-free through June 9th. Thanks to Florida's tax-free holiday. Lake 38 hosts its fifth Pro-Am this weekend, which showcases over 50 professional and amateur water skiers. The Lake 38 Pro-Am kicks off Friday and wraps up on Sunday with the Pro Finals. Admission for spectators is free and people are encouraged to come and watch. Lake 38's address is 5049 County Road 161 in Quincy. This is Rachel and A with your Roll Talk 93.3 Local News Update brought to you by Macklemore Systems. Tallahassee's go-to Mac store. Check them out online at macklemoresystems.com. This is meteorologist Paul Trombley with your Real Talk 93.3 weather update. Cloudy skies with a few peaks of sun this afternoon with daytime highs approaching 88. Northeast winds 8 to 15 miles per hour. Partly cloudy skies tonight, lows dip down to about 68. Slight chance for scattered storms tomorrow, high of 90. Upper 80s Sunday and Monday with a chance for scattered storms Sunday. This report is brought to you by the Lawn Johns. For all your landscaping and lawn care needs, visit thelawnjohns.com. Right now, 83. Hey, no fans. Our partner, ISF Inc., is a national management and IT consulting firm located right here in Tallahassee, Florida, solving the future for state governments through strategy, process, and technology. As a trusted advisor for state governments, ISF knows the importance of defining a clear and detailed strategy. Our friends at ISF can help your organization create a strategy that sets you on a path to success. ISF, your vision plus our expertise brings your brilliant ideas to life. Visit ISF.com to learn more. ISF, solving the future. Do, 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 do. My man, Eddie. Jeff, what's happening, dude? Bears. Eating people all over the place. I read another article today. It's the third one in the last month of somebody getting mauled to death by a bear. Man, you know, bears have their own space. Well, you got to let them have that. You do. You got to stay clear of bears is what you're saying. Yes. I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Here you go. If you had to be mauled to death, eaten alive by any animal in the world, which would you choose to eat you alive? Ooh, I think maybe I'd, maybe I'd want, I don't know, longevity time, a mouse. Um, <laughs> just a slow burn. Slow, slow little burn. This thing I mean, just finished can, the pinky. It's I, been a month. I could go go to work. I could still do my thing. I could probably live thirty <laughs> years. I thought you were gonna say great white because it'd be quick or a grizzly. We went with mouse. Yeah, mouse. Okay, you know, mouse. It is. <laughs> Gordo's bringing the flavor and flair of Cuban food to Tallahassee since 1996. The Jeff Cameron Show, brought to you by Orange Theory Fitness. Two Tallahassee locations, Midtown on Thomasville Road, and Northside in the Village Common Shopping Center. Online at Orange Theory Fitness.
as an aside because he played well today to bring uh, Sepp Straka on the program. We should do it. We're doing a little separate uh, little bonus pod with Sepp Straka. Didn't he Matt Kuchar his way into a top 10 or 12 at the PGA? Yeah, he's currently top 10 right now, so he's playing well. All right. We got any scores? Two to one Washington in the fourth over Utah. For those wondering about softball, that's where we sit. Didn't mention it yesterday. Should have in the process of uh, talking about softball since we were doing bat to ball sports before we do probables and all that other good stuff. Um, really pleased with the reshaping of the roster right now for Florida State baseball. A good day, uh, just a day ago, as uh, or Wednesday, I should say. Um, you know, you, you you found out first of all yesterday that Tibbs was coming back, and I was really surprised by that. You're talking about a kid who hit 338, had 17 bombs on the season, has a sweet stroke. I mean, I you know from the get go, we've talked a lot about how he's a he's a major league hitter. He's he's got a lot of talent. Um, so he comes back, which is nice. And uh, then you have uh, so that confirmation happened. Then you get the. Uh, you know, confirmation that Cam Smith, who was a uh, all ACC freshman uh, this year, returning, you know, after a horrible season like this, you never know, you know, a lot of guys could be upset. So he's one of the guys that you would want back off this team. And then you find out that USC, uh, UCF freshman uh, <clears throat> infielder Drew Farreau is coming in. And I watched his dad play Adam Farreau. I remember him. This is, uh, this is what happens. You get old and you watch people's kids come through here. Now, after you watch their dads come through, uh, Drew Farreau, by the way, last year at UCF, hit 15 home runs in his first season of college baseball as a freshman and uh, played really, really well. He hit, uh, let's see, hit 260, 51 RBIs, and 15 homers as a freshman. Bodes well. That'll do. That will lengthen the lineup at the very, very least. Yeah, it Might does. Be more. Yeah, and, I, and Adam was a really good player here. I remember him in the mid-'90s. He was a good player. Uh, anyhow, so you have a freshman infielder coming in. You've got your your Cam Smith coming back. He's got a lot of power, obviously. Uh, I mentioned already that you get Tibbs back. And then other good news was that uh, you got Alex Lotz, uh, Lodice, I think is how you say his name. Lodice, maybe? Uh, I'm not real sure. Uh, I did not see North Florida play this year, but he was a shortstop. Started 55 games this past year for the Ospreys. And he was first team all Atlantic Sun last year, went, 307, 16, and 63 for the slash line. Okay. 16 bombs, shortstop, 63 RBIs, hit over 300. Yes, sir. Add him to the list. University of Alabama outfielder Max Williams announcing that he is going to join the Knowles. As a freshman, he played very sparingly, hit 320 for Alabama in his first year. Highly regarded coming out of high school. In fact, he's from Jacksonville. He was rated the number 21 outfielder nationally when he came out in high school. 83rd best prospect in the country at the time. Uh, by Perfect Game USA. So you're, flip, you're seeing it now. The, the roster flip is underway. The roster flip is underway, and we understand what the philosophy is for Link Jarrett, which is to specialize. Mm -hmm. He wants players who can play certain positions, and they are there only to play that position. Not athletes who don't have a home on the baseball diamond. They know where to play. They know the ins and outs, and that way you mow it down one by one. Now, the thing is, can you bring in some arms, more of them, and can we see further development from the guys who had a nice finish to the season? So we'll see. Yeah, there just hasn't been a lot to uh, talk about, obviously, with Florida State baseball. And we all knew that this last season was a, a devastatingly sorry season. But we also know Link Jarrett can coach, has been successful everywhere he's ever been. Die hard Noel was an All-American here himself. He wants to flip this sooner rather than later. And he's in the process now. And I think we're not even close to done. You're going to see some more in the way of pitching. Uh, this could be a dramatically different-looking baseball team next year. It's really weird how this mirrors Norvell. You know, other than the the you know Norvell obviously didn't go to school here, but I'm saying that that's crazy to think about. Well, you also think about that this could happen sooner and quicker for a couple of reasons, not the least of which is there's no COVID, you know, and that was something that hindered Mike Norvell's ability to flip things quicker. Couldn't establish the relationships in the state that he needed to. Link Jarrett is fortified in the game, and he has done so at a higher level than Mike Norvell did before Mike took the job here in Tallahassee. So the things that you have that are an advantage, if you're trying to compare roster flip for roster flip, is that Link is more established in the baseball community and that there is no restriction on where he can go and who he can see like there was for Coach Norvell. Which Correct. It was a year plus where he couldn't talk to kids face-to-face. -face. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, no chance. No, no, no chance. That was a, a nightmare scenario. I remember talking about it at the time, but when losses mount, it gets lost. 
And, uh, you, you know, it's hard to be patient. It's hard to be patient, especially when you're on the wrong end of ass kickings. So it's, it's, it's really difficult. People don't know you. This is not your territory. Now, now it is. State of Florida and the Southeast region knows who Mike Norvell is and who these assistant coaches are. But when they got here, like, who are they? I've never heard of them before. Yeah, this is why we knew that would be slow and why you had to go to the portal as much as you did and all that good stuff. Our friends at Power Mill have jumped on board this year with us for baseball season. We appreciate that. Thanks to Power Mill Training Academy, who equip and motivate athletes focused on baseball and softball with specific tools to reach their true potential. And after all, that's what you want. You got kids playing softball, kids playing baseball. You want them to have a good time. And one of the ways to have a good time is to maximize your ability to play the game. Do that by having strong fundamentals and get taught the right way. Uh, they do that at uh, Power Mill. Also have youth camps. Uh, a lot of fun those youth camps are. I sent my kids to them as well. PowerMillSports.com is where you want to go for that time for Probables. Cue it up, baby. It's time for, how you say, with the pitching, uh, Probables? I don't know why I think this every time I see it. It's Lou Gehrig Day in Major League Baseball, by the way. Poor Lou Gehrig. That Lou Gehrig's disease. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time I think about it. Brutal. What's that from? That's from a joke uh, that, um, what's his face, that was in that fireman show that you like. Dennis Leary? Yeah, Dennis oh, okay. Leary said that joke. He goes, Rescue me. He, he, I haven't thought of that show in forever. Yeah. The joke, basically, I'm paraphrasing, was that uh, he said, uh, you know, back in the day, those guys, they used to tell them all the time, man, somewhere there's a disease with your name written all over it. <laughs> On Lou Gehrig's day, we uh, tipped the cap too soon for Lou Gehrig jokes. Brewers, Reds, Corbin Burns, and Brandon Williamson, Athletics, Marlins, Hogan Harris, Edward Cabrera, Cardinals, Pirates, suck it, Cardinals, Jack Flaherty, only Flaherty, Roanzi Contreras, come on, Roanzi, get it done at PNC, it's Luke Garrick's day, damn it, Phillies, Nationals, Zach Wheeler, Josiah Gray, Rays, Red Sox, Tyler Glasnow, Garrett Whitlock, Blue Jays, Mets, Chris Bassett, Justin Verlander. We've got the Mariners and the Rangers, Luis Castillo, John Gray, Angels, Astros, Shohei Itani. Hey, he's good at baseball. Romber Valdez. Rockies, Royals, Chase Anderson, Anderson, Jordan Lyles. Guardians, Twins, Aaron Savelli, Bailey Ober, Tigers, White Sox, Reese Olsen, Mike Clevenger, Cubs, Padres, Jamison Tyon. Having a rough go of it is Jamison Tyon this year. A little 0-3 with an 8-0-4 ERA. Yeah, you just hate to see it for the former Pirate. Michael Waka goes for the Padres. We've got the Braves and the D-backs. Charlie Morton. Morton! Merrill Kelly goes for the uh, D-back because he always does. Yankees, Dodgers, Luis Severino, Clayton Kershaw. Good matchup there. Orioles, Giants, Dean Creamer, and Logan Webb. That is a look at those that shall reside on the bump. Feel good about your matchup with the uh, Blue Jays, buddy? Playing some good baseball right now. Lower third of the lineup starting to hit. All right. Yeah, you guys are 30 and 27. So Six, are they. 16 and 0 if the starting pitcher can reach the sixth inning. Complete it. We just nice. have not had anybody complete more than five innings in more than half our game. Matthew, quick uh, director Matthew question. At 25 and 31, you feel good about the Phillies finishing the season Eight or more games above 500. Yeah, uh, he says they'll come around. At some point, they will come around. Interesting. Well, Kyle Schwarber can do better than he's done. With two singles? He's got two singles since April 28th. Tuffy. There are 11 different major leaguers who have had two singles in an inning. And I understand <laughs> that he's not there to hit singles. It's no, he's just, there to hit for, hit for power. But he has excuse me singles with no shift now. That tells you just how out of sync that that dude is. If he gets in sync, he dominates for a month, and he'll hit 15 home runs, and they'll win 20 games in a month. That's what Director Matthew is clearly counting on. Clearly. Maybe <laughs> maybe two months' worth of that in order to catch up to get to eight over 500. Well, the uh, Cardinals-Pirates uh, rings especially true to me always. Loathe the Cardinals. 
My buck goes to rise up at PNC. We play better on the road. I almost wish we were in St. Louis. What about Merrill Kelly and the D-backs? They're 34 and 23. I know. The hell? Merrill Kelly having started 40 times this year. At least it feels that way every time I do probable. It's like, Merrill Kelly again? Sweet Jesus. Are the boys interested in the NBA Finals at all? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We watched last night, and obviously, I I think Denver's going to win that series rather easily. Um, It holds their interest, even though it looks like it's going to go the way that Vegas thought it was going to go? Yeah, well, listen, uh, if you want to watch an incredible player with a unique talent like Nicole Jokic, then you can watch him play anybody because it's ridiculous. And I remember thinking if I was Miami, like that, the zone really worked well against Boston because they're five out and all they do is shoot threes. It's a real problem when you've got a decision maker in the middle of that zone like Jokic. That's going to be a long afternoon or night. Good work out of you. You guys have a great weekend. Be well. Good job, Director Matthew. Peace.